if you're seeking permission to spend time with the prospect, to sell them something conceivably, especially at this instance in time where the client's sizing you up and making a determination, how are you? Should I trust this guy? Should I trust the guy? If you're asking a question where the answer could be a no, this is the point if this is due to you. When you ask questions, and we're brought up from a young age to be permission-based, and that's how my mom taught me to be. I'm glad it, I did it this way. I still am this way. We all want to be civil with each other, right? But the problem is, in, in a sales situation, we have to deal with the reality that the, the reaction always is people don't want to be sold. They want to buy if it's of good benefit to them, but they're afraid they don't understand what you're going to do, if anything, good or bad. And so people are defensive and reflexiveness. And so they say no when given permission to say no. Okay. So this is a, this is a function. This is a reality of sales that we have to examine and change how we ask questions and, and, and leverage them in a way that gives us more opportunity to get a yes. And the easiest way to always, not always, but the more, uh, more commonly get a yes at certain intervals, like getting in the door, closing the deal, et cetera, doing trial closes in the presentation, like what we treat, teach. The easiest way to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is not to give an option of a no or, excuse me, change the, uh, the no or change the permission, not based off of whether or not you're going to do the appointment, but maybe where you're going to do the appointment. So, for example, how do we do this? We close by asking not, can we do the appointment with you? Do you have five minutes? Because we know what the answer is always going to be. It's going to always be a no. But what we do instead, when this is, guys, this is, and I'm going to talk telesales too, so I'll make sure to throw that in there, which is equally important. Um, the yes, no is not about the appointment permission. It's about, should we do the appointment out on the porch? Or should we do the appointment inside the house? Again, notice that I've asked for permission where we're going to do the appointment. I've assumed we're doing the appointment. Does that make sense? I, I didn't ask for permission. So I make the, the, the questioning and the thought process about something we're assuming we're going to do, which is the appointment, but I give them the courtesy of deciding where. Likewise, another close that will sometimes trade in and out here is should I take my shoes off before coming in? This is a, a very courteous thing to ask. Like, for example, my house, like it drives me nuts when people don't take their shoes off in the house. It's a personal thing. It's always been that way with me. So if somebody asked me, hey, should I take my shoes off or I come in? I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Take them off. But notice I didn't. The, the question isn't about should I come in or not or should we do this appointment or not? It's about my shoes on or off. Right. So that gives you this, uh, this sense of momentum that you're going to get in the door a lot more often. When you don't ask them permission about you, the appointment, you assume it and you make the yes, no decision about something other than that. Now, if you're setting appointments on the phone and guys, let me be clear. This is the most mistaken part of, of closing for appointments on the phone to set them later face to face at the door and definitely telesales. Let me tell you about telesales too. The, the, the change here for telesales, if we're selling over the phone, the change here is we're closing into a rapport building question. We're closing into the presentation of itself. Most of you should have a favorite hobby, a favorite color. If you don't, a great way to uh, build into that is ask them, oh, I see you live in so in so and so state, what city, how long you've lived there, what's it like there, is it great, is it terrible? The point is, is the close isn't, can I spend five minutes to pitch you over the phone? Because the answer is always no there too. Instead, what it's about is you're asking usually a, about their favorite hobby. So you like fishing. What's the fishing like this time of year down in Chattanooga? Notice I didn't ask them if we should keep talking. I'm getting right into my presentation, okay? So you have to get into the presentation always. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. But make sure you are listening to yourself, that you're asking this question the right way. Because again, it is commonly, it is commonly messed up. It doesn't work. Uh, it won't. This this script won't work nearly as effective if you close on a permission basis about doing the appointments. That makes sense. Okay. If somebody says they're busy. 
I am not immediately saying, no problem. Why don't I come back at 10 o'clock or does two work better? You always say, hey, no problem. It just takes me five minutes. What you do with this is up to you. You want to sit out in the porch or can I come in? Um, if somebody's, if your appointment setting and somebody says, hey, I'm busy at those times, I say, no problem. I'm actually working late. How about I show up at five o'clock or to seven work better for you? So notice I'm going right into some different times, right? And this is more of an issue if you're face-to-face, -face, I think, and over the phone as we'll get into a minute, strictly telesales, because there's this kind of um, bait to come see them later when, when really they're busy is just a push off. It's, it's a stalling tactic. Now, if you're over the phone, it's the same thing. Hey, no problem, Mrs. Prospect. This just takes five minutes and I'll be on my way. Then you close by continuing the conversation by saying something like, so, so I see that you love fishing. Where do you fish down in Chattanooga? Or you ask some other question uh, if they push back on that. But the point is to continue the conversation where you left off. You got to recognize that even people who sound like they like you, and, and they might like you, and they might halfway trust you, but they're not always going to tell the truth. And that's just the nature of, of a dynamic environment of, of you know, somebody's got to make a financial decision permanently the rest of your life to buy a policy, right? So they're going to say enough, possibly, to get rid of you. And, but sound, sound the smarter ones sound you know, trustworthy, but it's never, it's never truth. That's the thing you have to understand. You have to believe, unfortunately, that what they're saying isn't necessarily what they believe when they rebuttal. It is just a way to mitigate the risk of loss or the fear of something bad happening. And you have to answer that concern and you have to rebut it. And it, it generally comes down to trust at the end of those objections. At the end of the day, that whole I have questions thing is just a put off. That's how you got to that's how you got to deal with it. You so the, the solution, the answer is pretty much the same. The, you, the answer, the answer is something like, hey, look, I understand why you need to do due, due diligence. But but like you said, I'll go back to what they told me. You know, this is important for you. You know, you want to take care of your daughter and not burden her like, you know, your son burdened your family when he died unexpectedly, didn't have burial insurance and you told him to have it. Here's the thing, Mrs. Jones, this is a very reputable company. They're A-ranked. They're one of the best companies that I have to offer, and they're going to give you the best combination of price and coverage. And you're healthy, and you need to take advantage of this today because God knows what may happen tomorrow. So who do you want to start with today? So I would do the same thing, but this time I would just verbalize it. But the thing, the thing you've got to say, you've got to say this with confidence in your voice, guys. That's the other thing because – they're not, we know they're not going to do any due diligence. They're not, they're just getting you off the phone. Nobody does research. I'm telling you, they just go back to watching Jerry Springer. They're not, they're not going to sit here and think <laughs> like they've been thinking for a long time about doing this. And now they're pushing off because they have procrastination syndrome, right? So um, you have to, people are going to buy based off of how they perceive you. Do, and when you say that uh, rebuttal, you got to sound confident. And you got to sound authoritative in it. So practicing how you sound, and this is, again, it's important face-to-face, -face, but certainly over the phone, because you get a lot of this kind of stalling stuff at the close sometimes. You've got to have the authority to say, and with all the things I mentioned, why they should do business today.